the new stage is going to resemble. There's going to be some changes at Glen Oak. Now, I don't want everybody to get all choked up. We're changing a little bit. We're not, Glen Oak's always going to be Glen Oak, but we, we're growing, and, and that's what we want, ain't it? Amen. I think, uh, you know, I, I think I made the statement, I can't remember this church or the next one, so I don't want to say this church. But if we don't want to grow, I don't want to be here. Amen. If you don't want to grow, I don't want to be here. And, uh, you know, I've heard people say, well, we need to build a church. And I've even said we need to build a church. The church is already built. The church is already built. The church built you many years ago. Now we need to build the kingdom. So in improvements to the, to the building, we are building the kingdom. So, but we're going to get this up here where these guys have got plenty of room. They can be up here where I can see their pretty faces. Yeah. Hey, Lord, I don't know whether that was good or bad. Life fire, boys, I'm sorry. Yeah. But, uh, but either way, this is nothing said. We just, uh, we've had to lay us out just for a bit, putting it into the CAD, and, and uh, we're looking at starting it pretty quick. Uh, now, there's going to be some changes. Everybody's, I've had people say, well, we're going to... We're going, to, we're going to update the mourner's bench, all right? There's going to be, you say, I know somebody, well, you get rid of the mourner's bench. Let's, let's not turn into a pillar of salt this next step, all right? And don't be the stumbling block for what God's wanting to do here. So I want people to hear me out. So there's going to be some changes. We've looked, we're going to have to redo some things. And, uh, of course, you know, we, we, there's talk. Now, don't go home. Now, I know some of you, I'm just making it good for you to preach tonight, but you're going to, you're going to be walking in mud. We addressed the deacons there Sunday, and of course we, we, we may be updating our seating here. Uh, I know the pews, I love seeing pews in a church. But, now don't amen me so quick, unless you've got money to buy new pews. <laughs> I'm just kidding you. Susan. If you're not here to have, when we do the reefs, when we do anything trying to move these pews, somebody's going to get hurt. So we, we're, we're praying. Now, this ain't nothing that's happened. We're praying. We were donated a hundred and at least, I think, 150 of these chairs right here, brand new chairs. So we're not, we're just going to try some stuff. So please don't, don't get, don't get up in our shape on us in the near future. If you want, if you want to fuss at somebody, come to me directly. Don't go to Susie and Susie, don't you go to Charlotte. Charlotte, don't you go to Diane. Then the then time I get it, it went from this big to this big. We've tore out the carpet we put them in. We're going out Cotton Eye Joe's every Thursday and Friday night. That's the way it'll end up. Did anybody ever see that episode when Barney cut his finger a little bit? And he, you know, Andy went over to the drugstore to get some sulfur powder to put on that cut and Aunt B and some of them sitting in there. And time it got all the way around the ring, he had shot himself in the chest and was dead. You know, so we're, we're, nothing is set in stone. We're just wanting to move quickly on this because we're wanting to get this done by Bible school. We had, I thought about waiting until after Bible school, but... The, the deacons thought it'd see favor. You guys have really sold into this, continue sowing into it, and we want you to see that we're being stewards of God's money and moving forward. So there's going to be a little bit of changes, and we're going to do some trial things. Now, we're not telling you you don't have any say, but I guarantee you if I ask everybody what they thought, I'm going to get everybody, I'm going to have that many opinions. So what we're trying to do is accommodate the church to where when people come in, we can get as many people in here as we can, and for it to be on this stage, I'm... I don't know if y'all notice it, but I'm, I don't stand in one spot when I preach. And any day now, I'm going to knock Charlotte down, and she's going to smack me upside my head, me trying to preach, you know. But, uh, but no, just, just if you see that, that's, that's where we're at, guys. So we be praying. God, God's done some things, isn't he? God's done some things. Get excited about it. Get excited about it. Amen? So, and like I said, don't, 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 don't go in panic mode and lose your Baptist uh, uh, denominational standards right now. Let's just, just stay calm. It's all cool. But the stage is just too little. When we do anything, it's just too little up here. And these guys need to be up level, and we need to get these instruments up to where they're up here. Uh, so just a lot of different things the church needs upgraded in. And I guarantee, oh, uh, Bill looked down on us, and God let him say something. He said, boy, why ain't you already got it done? You know, I believe that's what old Bill Romines would say. Boy, why ain't you already got it done? Quit talking about it, you know. So, but be, be praying and, of course, uh, uh, looking forward to what God's going to do in, in, this, in this tent meeting. So please, again, get those, those uh, lost people out. I'm inviting everybody I know, man. I've got people coming. I'm inviting people in the neighborhood and everything. So, uh, and we're going to do uh, uh, in, in May or in uh, April, 
I'm going to do a, on Thursday night, I'm going to do a training class here on winning people to the Lord. Because a lot of us would lock up if somebody come and ask us what they need to do to be saved, we'd lock up. We'd say, well, wait a minute, let me get the preacher. You may not have time to get the preacher. They'll have a massive heart attack time I get back to them. So I want you equipped, and we're going to try to get some packages. Sheila and I is going to do this. We're going to try to get packages in your hand, and we'll try to get a card in your hand that you can just simply read off and instruct them how to go to, to be saved. And then we want to present people not just at this meeting, but from now on. We've had too many people saved right here just to not know they're just drifting away now. We, we, need, we need people calling. I need a team. I want you praying about coming together. Uh, and you can be that, t- that person that calls them, say, every Tuesday night, hey, we're just wanting to check on you. Did you read the first chapter of the book of John? We want to get some, 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 just some books of John into their hand. Let them get into the book of John. Then, then we'll get them on into the heart of the Bible. Let them see how much God loved them and what all he done for them. So we got some things we're going to be doing between now and then, and that's part of this growth. We're not just trying to make a pretty church here, a pretty building. We're trying to make a, a, a beautiful church, and we're building for the kingdom of God, not for ourselves. All right, so a uh, lot of things going on, a lot of things going on. Friday night, please be here. If you haven't bought tickets, I think they're selling tickets tonight. Does anybody know they're selling them at the door? They're selling them at the door. All right, Leslie's back there now getting in line to buy her. Yeah, but no, they'll be selling them at the door. So come out s- 7 o'clock. Am I right? I, I, Faye, what in the world good are you? 7 o'clock. Okay, th- I apologize. I don't have my little paper up there. Yeah, I do. Uh, they'll, be, they'll be feeding you some, some chicken. Uh, okay, never mind. There it is. Where you been? Uh, okay. We're going to have to start relying on it more, too. But either way, just a lot of stuff going on in our church, guys. A lot of stuff going on in church. But tonight, we may hear worship the Lord. Amen? I need this time with the Lord, don't you? I need this time with you guys. So I love you. Thank you for coming out. Beautiful crowd. Just looking forward to uh, what God's got in store. And I know, you know, there ain't no doubt that old Roger's anointed. And there ain't no doubt he's got the ability to feed us. Now all we got to do is eat, you know. So looking forward to hearing what Brother Roger, uh, what word God's give Brother Roger. And... Uh, just just looking forward to uh, to what God's going to do here in the future. If you're here tonight and you're not saved, maybe you're not. I don't know. Um, I think all of you are, but if you're not, then don't leave tonight unsaved. If you're here and you're just wallowing around in the hog's pen, well, the Father's wanting you to come home. He's got a robe for you, and he's ready to feed you. All right, so let's, let's, uh, let's just turn it all over to God tonight. Now, before we go to Lord in prayer, I do uh, want you to pray for John's dad. We won't go in, but, but John King, of course... His dad's got some some uh, stuff he's going through physically. A uh, very special man to me. I love that man just like a brother. And uh, please be praying for him. Of course, praying for John and that family. Amen. And, uh, of course, Tina Todd's mom, I think. And I apologize. I had a tooth pulled out yesterday. Uh, Tina Todd's mom, I think they said, did I, did I read that right? It went into her thyroid, I think. Group. <laughs> yeah, but her, she said no thyroid, okay. Okay, well, just, just, just be praying for, yeah. for her. Yeah. Now, someone else, of course, continue praying for Tori. I think she's making baby steps towards improvement from. Yeah, she's having pain with that complication, but I think she's getting better every day. Good, good deal. Good deal. Please continue praying. And pray for David, man. I know mentally you've been through it, brother. I mean, I know you have. Both of them have. And, of course, you know, just, just continue praying for Tori and David. But it's such a vital part to our church. So, uh, you know, I want to lift them up. Someone else now. Don't let me forget nobody. Amen. Amen. Someone else? Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jonah. Someone else? Amen. Someone else? Amen. 
Someone else. Yeah, yeah, I seen her on Facebook. So yeah, play. So, someone else. Amen. Amen. Get her here, May. You know, yeah. 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 Well, I, I assure you it is, but you can't let Satan keep you out. I mean, you just got to keep going. Yeah, just keep going. Amen. Amen. It, yes, absolutely. Of course, we need to, well, we'll go over that some other time, but be praying for this, you know, and get tell people they're going to give you a million excuses why they can't come to church, but they'll give you a million excuses why they went to Walmart, Dollywood. Does that make sense? Now that's not belittling or or, or putting anybody down, but the Bible says where your heart is, that's or where your treasure is, that's where your heart is. So where your desire is, that's where you're going to be. I mean, you, you don't have to stick your head in the garbage can, know you're going to find trash. You know, I mean, that's just common sense. So please be praying. That's the type of people that God's... we got to get people like that changed before we're ever going to reach an infidel world. You know, because we've got too many people portraying you can just live ever how you want. And I'm not saying this about... Please, I'm talking about people I'm dealing with. Well, preacher, I'm ready to go to heaven, but they're... Well, you sure don't look like you're ready to go to heaven. That's not for me to judge, but I'm just saying, dude, that ain't the Bible. You're not, the only thing you've lined up with is you believe in Jesus. I mean, that's all you've lined up to. You, know? you say, well, that's all I need. But you got to understand, like I said Sunday, be not conformed to this world, but be you transformed by renewing your mind. If you get saved, there's going to be some changes in your life. Trust me. There's going to be changes in your life. So, Roger's preaching. I'm shutting up. Somebody else. Yeah, yeah. And, honey, that's exactly what I'm talking about. That's the people we got to get to. Amen. And love on them. Don't, you're not going to win them hating them and telling them how bad they are and how stupid they are and how smart you are and how better you are. Just tell them, say, listen, without Jesus, we're all going to go in hell. I mean, it don't matter what you are. I don't care how much money you got. don't care. It's just, I'm telling you, it's get ready for an influx of souls, and you've got to be ready to win them over. Amen. Amen. We'll cut, just let me know. I'll get somebody to come get him. <laughs> yep. 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 You go to the grocery store with him. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> so let me tell you something. Excuses. That's what I said. Listen, guys, when God showed me that down there at that mall the other day, and when I see somebody that goes completely against in abominational sins, I get mad and I say, you know what? Man, just go up and slap the far out of them one good time to say, God, forgive me. Might knock some sins to That's the way Danny looks at things, but God said, now let me show you how I see it. So, how does God see it? God sees them as his. Everybody is created beautifully in the sight of God. God said he has no respect for person. From the least to the most, most powerful, he loves every one of us just the same. The problem of it is they've never been brought to the light of Jesus Christ. And what's going to happen, these people are thinking they're walking into light, but they're not. Then when they die, the Bible says that they'll be appear before the Lord. They'll say, did we not cast out demons in your name? Did we not heal the sick? Did we not do this in your name? Did we not do that? And he's going to say, depart from me. I never knew you because I never seen you. You never was under the blood. 
without the acceptance of the, uh, of the blood of Jesus Christ and the acceptance of the power of the resurrection and know what he's your interceder to God now. It's only through and by the uh, power of Jesus' death and resurrection we can be saved. That's the only way we can be saved. And we, we can confess that and we can go through the motions, but with a heart man believeth unto righteousness, with, with a mindset, with a thought process. So it's very important. We're in a time right now that counterfeit is stronger than it's ever been, not just in money. So that's the reason I'm so into this, this getting the saved saved, it seems like, in order to get the lost saved. So be praying. Somebody else, we want to give Robert Roger ample time here. So. Yeah. And she's struggling with it because what if she wears her little heart on her shoulder and you know, I told her the other day, I said, Next time you tell her, she's got plenty of people like you. Yeah. Amen. Yeah, bless her heart. Be praying. Be praying. Thank you, Marlo. Someone else? Well, if not, if you would, let's stand tonight again. Be praying for Roger. The altar is open if you need prayer. And just be praying for our church. Amen. Amen. Brother Alan Emman, will you lead us to the throne of grace tonight? Father, we come to you tonight, God, we're thankful, Lord, once again to be in your presence, Lord. God, I thank you, Lord, for grace. I thank you for salvation, Lord. I thank you, Lord, for your love, Lord. That, Jesus, that you could tell me that you didn't come to condemn me, Lord, but you come to save me, and thank you for doing that. Lord, I was so unfit and so unworthy. God, I think often about what Paul said. I am what I am by your grace. Through your grace, God. It's the reason I'm here tonight. Through your grace tonight, Lord, I have a voice and I have a body to live in. Lord, I just want to thank you for loving me. I thank you, Lord, for seeing through all of my failures, all my imperfections, all my weaknesses. Jesus, I love you. God, tonight, before I pray for anything, Lord, I want to pray for the lost. Lord, that you would convict, Lord, that God, you would anoint. God, help us, Lord, as a congregation of your body to come together, Lord, and understand, Lord, that eternity is forever. And God, we don't want to see nobody, nobody end up not making it to heaven. So God, touch the lost tonight, Lord. Lord, I pray you touch for these that we've discussed, Lord, that God, they make a confession with their mouth, Lord, but their heart is so far from you. God, I pray tonight, Lord, that you would let them know, God, that that they, they, they've talked, Lord, but they've never been transformed. So God, bring them out, their, out of their comfort zone. And God, transform them, Lord. God, we know, Lord, that the desires of the flesh can be overwhelming. God, we know, Lord, it can take over and it makes stupid decisions. But God, we know, Lord, that you're capable, Lord, of delivering, setting free, and cleansing. So Lord, we pray tonight you help these. Lord, with so many that's, that's sick tonight, Lord, been mentioned. God, you know each one. God, be with them, Lord. God, be with the ones, Lord, that's lost loved ones this week, Lord. Sister Jerry DePew and the family father. Be with them, God. Touch them, Lord. God, comfort them, Lord, as only your Holy Spirit can do. And Lord, help us tonight, Lord, never to sell you short, Lord. God, to know that you're bigger than all of our problems, Lord, that you outweigh all of our worries, Lord, and there's not a step that we take, Lord, that you're not right there with us. 
So God, just help us, Lord, to bring in that promised assurance. Jesus, again, be with Brother Roger tonight. Be with the singers. And Lord, just take charge of this service. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Take over now and lead us. We love you and we praise you. Let everything we be done in this church be done for your honor, your glory, and your magnification. Christ, it is in your name we pray. Amen. 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 Come right ahead, everybody's going to say. Yeah, go ahead. I just want to give give God the praise because He did something for me the other day that I, I've never I never experienced it like that before. He was He was in my presence, and that, that honored me. And I don't give I want to thank Him for it. Amen. But I was driving that truck and I was going down the road, and a particular song came on, and I thought I could drive that truck right into heaven. <laughs> I swear I thought I said this is this is the big one. We're going. Yeah. But he, 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 was, he was that close to why, I don't know. I don't, I don't deserve it. But I just want to give God the, 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 the praise and the thanks for that. Amen. That was great. That was wonderful. Amen. I, believe, I believe that truck was flying. Amen. I thought I could go up. Amen. Oh. Amen. If I had somebody with me, would have would went on in, I guess. But I want to thank the Lord for that. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Just want to thank you, Lord, for every time that you heard me pray. I just want to thank you for always being there. When I was so down and down, you came along and made me want to shine. I just want to thank you, Lord, thank you, Lord. And if I had a thousand lives to live, I'd give them all to you, Lord, because you've been so good to me. That is the least that I can afford, but you made the good number the band and you've been the best friend that I've ever had I just want to thank you Lord thank you Lord I just want to thank you Lord for every time that you heard me pray I just want to thank you for always being there and when I was so down and down you came along and made me want to shout I just want to thank you Lord thank you Lord and if I had a thousand lives to live I'd give them all to you Lord Cause you've been so good to me That is the least that I can afford Cause you made the good times outnumber the bad And you've been the best friend that I've ever had I just want to thank you, Lord Thank you, Lord I just want to thank you for every time that you heard me pray, I just want to thank you for always being there. And when I was so down and down, you came along and made me want to shout. I just want to thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord.
reach the other shore, all my troubles will be over, and I'll rest forevermore. My eyes will be on Jesus, and my heart will be
Everybody say, I got hope. I, got hope. I didn't hear you. There's a spiritual sickness in this world going on. Yeah, come on. God and on church as well. There is a spiritual sickness. People have lost all hope. They're giving up on things that you thought they would never give up on. Uh-huh. Spiritual dreams are just broken. Yeah. Broken lives, broken promises, broken plans, yeah. broken God. Yeah. All these things are being broken because we're losing our hope in Jesus Christ. Yeah, come on. Peter said for us to be ready to give an answer yeah. for a reason yeah. for that hope. If you do it today, come on, brother. we say we might in your face and be saying, how much? What's telling you that this Jesus Christ is real? Yes, sir. What's come telling on. him that you're going to follow him? What's giving you that hope? Everybody in here has some broken hope. Yeah, come on, brother. I guarantee you, you experienced it. I guarantee you also that you had some hard times. And during them hard times, you prayed like you've never prayed before. You put your hopes on something that you thought you could get from God. It's not what you hope you can get from God. It's what is God going to give you for that hope. Amen. Come on. What is hope if you had to explain it here tonight? What would it mean to you? Am I not on? Possible are all possible with God. Amen. I don't know where this going out of, and the word hope has been with me all week. Amen. Amen. Think about it. I see so many people who've lost their desire to even be in the house of God anymore. Yeah. Yeah. That's the spiritual sickness I'm talking about. Yeah, kids don't want to be in church, the their kids don't want to be in church, yeah. parents of them don't want to go to church. The spiritual sickness is overtaking us. Yeah, we've been worried for two years about COVID and, and how it's affected us and how many of us have survived it, if you will. But that third time we get it may be the one that takes us out of here. Amen. But I guarantee you, if they take me out of here, the embalmer will have to have a trot line to sew my lips together to keep me from smiling because I know where I'm going to. That's my hope. Amen. Amen. It's going to take something strong to get a smile off me when that last breath goes out. Because God gave me a hope that's beyond any expectation I could ever ask for. When He died on that cross, He gave me that expectation. In Isaiah 11, 1, it says that there's a root, a tree that has been cut down to the stump level. But out of, off of that root is going to be a branch. And in that branch is going to come an offshoot, if you will, of that branch. That was Jesus Christ sent for me. Come on. When have you got down on your bending knees and said, Lord, I know it's beyond hope. I know it's in your hands. Some of you said it in your prayers tonight. It's in God's hands. It ain't what you can do, huh? Susie? It's what God can do to change these people. We can get 100,000 saved here on this altar, but if they've lost hope, it's not going to mean anything to them. If you can't answer beyond any shadow of a doubt that you know where you're going tonight, then you're experiencing that spiritual sickness. Danny preaches his heart out about getting people to to participate, to, to come to know him. And yet they walk out these doors on Sunday morning. The message lasted from here to the parking lot. We should hear a message that uplifts us to a point where hope and hard times and 
situations are coming and financial things are coming and our, our physical afflictions that we have to fight and all these things come up against us, we're not going to lose hope. Where's your hope at tonight? John, go ahead and pull up some few scriptures here before I get into the actual message scripture. But go ahead and pull up that first one, John. Thanks, sir. Rejoicing in hope. Patient in tribulation. Continuing instant in what? Prayer. Amen. Prayer is the most important part of this service. It ain't Danny. And it ain't me. Come on, preach. It's the fact that you're conveying and confessing with your mouth, you need some kind of help. Well, you need something beyond what this world is able to offer you. But these broken lives, broken dreams, all these things that I, I just mentioned here as a part of our life is, is it takes a confident assurance in our hearts yeah. that what we've asked God to do, He's going to do it. Over 8,000 promises in this Bible. I quote that scripture a lot. Because I know every one of them promises is going to yield something back to me. Come on. 137 times in the Bible, hope is mentioned. So it must mean something. It ain't just idle words. Our whole life is made up of hopes. Yeah. I hope my children do well. I hope my children progress well. I hope my children stay in good health. I hope I can get through this financial times I'm into. I hope I can get through this hospital stay that I'm in. I just hope, hope, hope. But you've got to mix that with a little faith. Amen. Everybody say amen good and loud here. Amen. Faith has to be mixed in with that little recipe of hope. You can have faith. You know, I think you quoted it at Sunday. The people profess me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. That's because of that spiritual sickness yeah, that's right. no, that I'm talking yeah. about. I, I don't know what that means in, in terms of your own personal relationship with the Lord. But it should mean something to you if you are not confident in what you're asking for. God's going to take care of it. Don't waste your time praying for it if you don't believe it. Alan was, teaching on, Alan was teaching on the Beatitudes Sunday. And he was saying how the, each one of those was blessed. But the Bible also says, Blessed is he that hath not seen, yet believe. Amen. That's us. Amen. You can't see hope. If you have a house, you can't hope for another one. Well, I guess you could. But why do you hope for things you already have? Amen. So what are you hoping for today, tonight, this week? Hoping for promotion. Hoping for better jobs. Hoping for better houses. Better cars. What are you hoping for tonight? When we come through them doors, we ought to be hoping somebody gets saved here at Glen Oak Baptist Church and you were a participant in it. What are you hoping for? Many of you have experienced some times, and I have too, where you came probably out close to death. But your hope was not in the fact that you escaped that. Your hope is in the fact that God protected you with that. That's what hope is. Bending knees of hope. Come on, brother. Depression. Overwhelmed. All of those lead you back to hope. <clears throat> Probably everybody in here at some point in your life has said, I hope it gets better. I hope I get out of this. God bless you now. Out of that. I hope I can make it just another week. Another day. I just hope I can make it till I pay off the house. Pay off the car. And we ain't even got through today yet. Well, ain't it the truth? That's true, brother. Hope to go here on vacation. Hope to go there on vacation. You know, a child, I remember when Kelly and them were growing up, we would say we were going camping and different things. They would, they would get up so excited about it, packing up the car and doing all this type stuff. That's an expectation. That's what hope is. Mm -hmm. Jumping for joy. 
like when Danny and Sheila go to Disney World. He gets so excited. He gets to ride these things. See, his hope went from an expectation to a realization. You know you have crossed into that renewing of your mind when you get beyond the expectation to the realization that God's going to do it. And that's what we need to get more of is a realization that God's going to take care of these things. Many of us had bad bosses over the years. Don't get me wrong. But hard times brought better days. Would you look back on what's happened in your life already and ask for a repeating of those? Huh? Why? It was hard! But if it's not hard, you don't grow. Amen? I can remember hard times here at this church when we had to take up an offering just to pay the KUB bill. Special offering. But we're still here. What are you going to do tomorrow with that hope word? Go ahead to the second one there, John. First Peter 1 Peter 1.3 says, Blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to His abundant mercy hath begotten us again unto a lively hope. Not a dead hope. That spiritual sickness will give you that dead hope. I'm talking about a lively hope. Peter also goes on to talk about us being lively stones. We're not dead stones. When this tent uh, meeting comes up here soon, and it's not that far away, if we go to that tent meeting without understanding that we are a lively hope for somebody in that congregation, we've already lost the blessing. First Corinthians, John 11, 1, I mean 1, 13, 13. And now about a faith, hope, charity, and these three things, but the greatest of these is charity. Charity means you have a little hope that what you have, you're able to share with somebody else. Everybody say amen here tonight. Amen. It, should, it, it troubles me when we see all these people walking these streets. I mean, it really does. Um, it's only by the grace of God that we're not out there doing the same thing tonight. That's exactly right. Sheila and I drove up Gay Street there the other night, and they're sitting there with blankets over their head and sitting on those corners between buildings trying to stay warm. Where's their hope? Hope that someone's going to take care of them? Hope that it's going to get better? Everybody in here grew up mostly poor. Ain't no rich people here, are they? Rich in Jesus Christ. But it ain't about the money. It's about what you got from God. By that hope. Hope that it would get better. Hope that people would be saved here at Glen Oak Baptist Church. I can't tell you how many. I would guess probably at least a thousand have been saved here at this church over the last 40 years. That's a lot of people. Many at revivals, many at Bible schools. But you know what never changed here is the love and charity of hope. Amen. Proverbs 13, 12. Or I'm sorry, uh, Hebrews 11, 1, John, sorry. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. And what? The evidence of things not seen. You know, a lot of people say, well, if I could see God moving and doing this thing, I might be able to serve Him a little better. What does God have to shake you with to understand that your servitude is not that you get something from it. The servitude is that you're willingly able and willing to do it. That song you heard that picked you up so good there, Alan, that you could have drove that forward to heaven, you and brother back here, uh, was a song that uplifted you because you'd heard and secured in your heart the hope of Jesus Christ. Not anything else. 
If it is, it's just emotion. I'm telling you, people, being saved ain't an emotion. It's an unseen, confident expectation that what I have accepted in my life, I have accepted for the truth, and you're never going to change it. The spiritual sickness is people have never been saved, and yet they've been coming to church for 20 years. They've never made that way down this old-fashioned altar. Many times they felt like it, well, I probably should have went, but I didn't. What if tomorrow is the day you end up in the pits of hell? Then you have no hope. That old beggar and, and old Lazarus. You're crying out in the charcoals of hell with lost hope. I'm trying to secure your minds tonight that there's a hope beyond what's going on. Absolutely. In this world right now. Glory to God, glory to God. Drop down to Jeremiah 29 11, John. Amen. I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord thoughts of peace and not of evil, and to give you an expected end. That's hope. Our expectation is is that when that last breath goes out of us, that we're present with the Lord. That's not just a funeral thing. That's an assured expectation. Absent from this body is present with the Lord. So what, what, what are we living our lives on? What's going on around us or what's going on in us with the Lord and His Holy Spirit? How do we get people to understand that the Holy Spirit is in this church a lot of the times and you denied it because of what's going on around you? Everybody say amen. amen. Talking to all of us, so you can't always come through those joy, doors with joy and, and love and everything in your heart when everything else is going down against you because it's hard. Do you think it wasn't hard to carry that cross? You think it wasn't hard when he laid them hands out there and put them nails into it and see the blood squirting out of it? I pricked my finger and my bleed like a stuck hog. And, and here Jesus Christ is taking those pins into his hands and his feet only to stand on that cross and the shame up against him. Thinking of us. That's our hope. Peter says for us to be ready to give a reason for that hope. That's part of it right there. When you can tell somebody, that's why I know that I have this hope. You can write about Muhammad and you can write about all these others and I, you can take them to their tomb and they're still there. They can show you the one in Israel of, of Jesus Christ and he ain't there. That's Tennessee and ain't. I'll try to do a couple more here in the verses, and I don't want to keep you too long tonight. Isaiah 40, 31. Kelly sings that song. It's a beautiful song. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up wings with eagles. They shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. That's hope. It ain't about the bird. It's about the fact that God gives you the strength. Many of you worked on a job today. God gave you the strength to get up this morning. Well, I hope I can do it. I'm just so tired. I just hope I can do it. I just hope I can make it through the day. We've all been there. See, hope is the center of most of people's lives. But how are you using that hope? Is what means the most. May not like your job, may not like the people around you, but you can still love Jesus Christ. Amen. Like you said for Shelby, just sing Jesus loves me. I got a bunch of anchor verses I carry around my back pocket that I use a lot in my mental state of that. Not that mental state, Sheila, the other one. <laughs> Amen. 
One more not on the verses leading into the Romans 8. Hebrews 10, 23. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, for He is faithful that promised. That's an assured hope. That's, that's the greatest part of this hope study. And Hebrews 10, 13, 10, 23 says, Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without this wavering because we know that what God has given us is a God of hope. He's not a God of false hope. Do you come to church just because you think the, the preacher said it and, and if I come and I put money in the offering plate, I'm going to end up in that place called heaven? You can't buy your way in. You can't come because it's a social event you got to come because God wants you in his house forsake not yourselves assembling together as some count assembling but be you be you how many suffered reproach somebody said something bad about you didn't like the way you were doing things could care less about your situation it's reproach but you got something beyond those situations. A lively hope in Jesus Christ. It's not a dead hope. A lot of people think they wear them crosses and so forth. That, that's just a symbol of Jesus Christ on the cross. My Jesus came off the cross. I love the symbolization. Don't get me wrong. I love that. It's, it's, it's a part of witnessing. But my Jesus came off of that cross. Amen. John, let's turn to uh, pick up there in Romans 8, verse 23. And not only they, but ourselves also, which have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves groan within ourselves, waiting for the adoption to wit the redemption of our bodies. Amen. For we, in 24, are saved by hope. Sure, it talks about uh, with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. But here we're talking about, he's saying that, that you've grown inside. You'll have a, a yearning, a, a groaning inside that says, i got to know this man, Jesus. And that's what you're talking about having these classes. Knowing about Jesus. And the more you know of Him, the stronger you'll be. I guarantee you, you know more now today than He did in 94. Or 74, whenever you accepted Jesus Christ. The Bible says we're just drinking a little milk. But it's time we started getting on the meat of God's Word. But if we have hope in 25, for that that we see not, then do we with patience wait for it? What does is, what is waiting mean? Deferred? Proverbs talks about it being a deferred Time of waiting with the heart, sickness comes. With all these things that come up, how many things have we done in our lives that we wished we hadn't have done? And secondly, wishing that we hadn't have done that we could have done better. And secondly, that we're putting our trust in God to take care of it the next time. Yeah. Yeah. So that's what's wrong today with our churches too. They're preaching another Jesus than what I'm talking about tonight. Very true. Very true. You say, well, what do you mean? Well, if you look at a lot of the translations, they've taken out the blood. They've taken out the beatings. They've taken out all the stripes. They've taken out all the shame. They've taken out all those things that tell us who our Jesus was and why He done it for us. Where's your hope? Most of you yelled, I got hope. Do you really? What about the next battle that comes? Have you strengthened yourself for the next battle? The next death? The next loss? The next thing to get you through these things? The next job loss? Whatever that may be. you got to get strengthened. Amen. You know, you see bodybuilders lifting and doing this all the time, working out. Why do they do that? They want to be strong in what they're committed to don't you want to be strong in what you're committed to Amen. spiritual sickness 
826 says, Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities. For we know not what we should pray as we ought. But the Spirit itself maketh intercession, it says, for us, with groanings which cannot be uttered. Who's sending up that request? Elizabeth sung that song, He Knows My Name. Yes, He does. And with the groanings of my guardian angel up to me, you're not always expressing with your mouth what the inside is saying you, you're doing. But God knows your groanings. God knows your burdens. The songs you sung tonight went right along with this. The burdens and the hopes that we have is real. One more verse here and I'll close. Romans 12.10 says, Be kindly affectioned to one another. With brotherly love and honor, preferring one another, not slothful in business, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord, rejoicing in hope in verse 12, and patient in tribulation. Have you got a wavering spirit? That's the worst kind of spirit to have, is a wavering spirit. Matthew says for us not to meditate upon what our answers are going to be. If today was your last day and you hadn't made that commitment, what would your answer be? Absent from the body is present with the Lord. But if you've never accepted Him, He's going to tell you, depart from me, you worker of iniquity, for I never knew you. There's nothing more sad to me than that, that phrase. No more hope. No more caring. No more... Family members, it's going to be there. The Bible says there's a great gulf fixed. You can't see who made it. All you'll know is you didn't. Hell is real. I guarantee you most of us have seen people, we'd like to shake them into heaven. But you can't do that. It's a free will thing. Rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation. And in the last verse here. 12, 13. Distributing to the necessity of the saints. Given to hospitality. Bless them which persecute you. Everybody say amen. amen. Well, I ain't going to forgive them. I'll have a barbecue party, but they ain't coming. What are you harboring that's keeping you from rejoicing in the hope I'm talking about tonight? Wouldn't we all like to be happier Christians? Not worried about all this stuff from day to day and week to week and year to year. Just happy in the Lord. Draw back to the time when you first accepted Jesus Christ. How excited like that little kid going fishing or going to Disneyland. So excited about it. What changed? Did you give up? Or did God? I can tell you God didn't. It's you. Me. Well, you just don't know what I'm going through. That's true. I don't. I guarantee you God does. He knows your name. He knows what you're going through. Amen. Amen. Singers be getting ready there. I'll close here with 15, 16. Romans 12, 15. Rejoice with them that do rejoice and weep for them that weep. Do you have compassion for your brother's problems and issues, concerns? And 16 says, Be of the same mind one toward another. Mind not high things, the things which don't get you anything, they're just temporal. But the things that are unseen. But condescend to men of low estate and be not wise in your own conceits. Don't let your head get so big that because you've been a Christian for 40 years that you can't learn something from God. Amen. Won't you stand, please, as they sing this song. Let me ask you tonight, as they sing this song,
Maybe you've been coming here a long time, and maybe you've you said to yourself, well, I just don't have no hope anymore. I just don't have any desire. I've had people at my work tell me before they just can't pray and can't do these things anymore. That's because they've got the spiritual sickness. Maybe tonight you want to get well of that sickness. Not the Omicron or the Delta or the uh, Stealth or any of those things that are out there right now. But because you are spiritually dead inside, you've lost that desire again. Make tonight that night that you just step out. Don't worry about the pride. Don't worry about what people think. But put God first in your life to come. Amen? As they sing. A country where no twilight shadows yeah. Yeah. Who's he at tonight? A dinting day or night will never be. It's a city where no storm clouds will ever gather. Oh, this is just what heaven means to me. What will it be when we get over yonder? And we'll join the throne around the glassy sea. We'll join our loved ones and crown Christ forever. Oh, this is just what heaven means to me. And when at last I see the face of my Savior, before whose image all other love I plead. And when they crowd him, King of kings, I'm gonna be there. Oh, this is just what heaven means to me. What will it be when we get over yonder? And we'll join the throne around the glassy sea. We'll join our love once and crown Christ forever. Oh, this is just what heaven means to me. Kelly. You want to sing yours? We ain't no hurry. God, use her now. Find the answer. 
answers to those problems you can't solve. If you'll just place them in the mighty hands of God. Hey, man, well, glory. If there's a Go ahead, God bless your heart. Your plea, you'll find an ear that's always open and the power beyond degree. He'll say, child, you'll find consolation on your knees. Whatever brings you to your knees is good for you. Jesus knows what's best for you. So in prayer, you'll find the answers to those problems you can't solve. If you'll just place them in the mighty hand of God. Well, glory. Thank you, sweetheart. Awesome job. Awesome job. Hey, Amen. I tell you, she can sure sing a lot better than her daddy can preach. Hey, Amen. Well, glory. Thank you. That has blessed me. You all bless Roger. What a great word, man. I tell you, this church is blessed with so much talent. It's blessed with so much talent. I love every one of you. You going to bring somebody with you Sunday? Oh, bless her heart. Amen. We'll we'll just close out tonight with that special prayer, you know. And yeah, yeah, that's that's uh, died with the complications of of COVID, you know. And of course, uh, you know, I, I, Sheila and I were actually not far behind that officer that got hit. We actually seen that accident and said it happened. We seen it aftermath of it there and it wasn't good and you know you, you often you know just I, the Bible says be you ready for you know not what hour <laughs> he's coming he did, maybe not in rapture but in death and I you know so I look around and, and you know you hear these stories and man you know we need to be praying don't we we need to be praying Again, don't forget, Friday night, we're going to close out in prayer with this little girl uh, and be praying, you know, one for another. Yeah. Uh, guys, the, the world is not going to believe in God unless we take God to them. Yeah. Okay? It's just, it's, I know it's, it, uh, we, we've become a little bit religious just coming to church. But uh, religion will leave you as soon as you go out the door. A relationship will go with you forever. So, so just uh, allow God to... Do some things in your life, you know. I just, I just love you this death. And again, be out Friday night. Come and support our church. The proceeds. I meant to mention it early. Earlier, we'll be going to our vacation Bible school. All right. So, uh, uh, need to raise a little more. We, we've got some money budgeted, but we want to, we want to, we want to put on the best Bible school this church has ever seen this year. Amen. Amen. That's Brother Herman that sits here. Somebody over here says. Bless his heart. Bless his heart. Be praying for Herman. Be praying for Herman. Well, glory. If not, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Thanks for coming out tonight. I love you. Man, what a blessing it has been here tonight. Be sure to grab a hold of old Roger and tell him what a great meal he served. He did great. He did great. Awesome, awesome word. Father, we come to you tonight. We're thankful, God, for another opportunity, Lord. Lord, I thank the Lord for the word that we've heard tonight. God, it is in you at all our hope lay. 
Lord, I'm reminded of what you told the church of Thessalonica. Lord, that we sorrow not even as those who have no hope. <laughs> Lord, thank you, Jesus, for our hope. Thank you for this church. Thank you for these great singers, God, that you've given a gift, Lord, to sing. Lord, I pray you bless everybody tonight as they go their way. And Lord, a special prayer for this little girl, Father. God, touch that illness, that ailment, God. Lord, just let your Holy Spirit go in, Lord, and do what we can't do. Let it do what doctors can't do. God, just pr provide a healing miracle. Lord, a lot of people, Lord, battling cancer tonight. Lord, I pray, God, and I speak your word, your blood over their life, God, that we get good results from all of this. Jesus, again, be with us. Special, special prayer, Lord, for Tori and David. Lord, just help her, Lord, strengthen Tori. God, touch that body. Touch David, Lord, and give him peace, Lord. We love you, Jesus. We thank you for dying for us. God, let everything we do bring you honor and glory. It's in your name we pray tonight. Amen, amen. Love you. Be careful.